Oh, first impressions are when you drive up the road are absolutely magnificent. And like you say, the views are incredible. So far, so good. But what about the interior? This your kind of decor? No, I don't think the decor is, but certainly the beams are in style and in keeping with what we were looking for from a property, yes. There's a lot of beams through, through this house, and they've all been um, glossed over very thickly with this. But the normal way of um, bringing it back to its natural state is to sandblast it. But because this property is listed, you really should paint strip it, and there's a lot of work involved. Stripping is a bit of a theme in this house, actually, because there's tons and tons and tons of wallpaper everywhere. It's really important to look beyond surface decor. Despite initial appearances, there are many authentic and surprising features. Well, Terry, pick a staircase. Anyone's a winner. We're going to try. This one. Come in. This is where the, the, the main bedroom was. I'm not sure if it's the best use of space, but it does have a very beautiful view. Yeah. Would you be able to make the floor smooth and level? Uh, you couldn't with the existing floor. I think what you'd have to do is put another floor on the top of it. But it, it is fairly it's very drunken again. But look, we're seeing that in all these old houses, aren't we? That's right. So are we right to bring you here? Yeah, you've got some very positive vibes going from us at the moment. We're uh, very taken by it. Great. Lots to think about Lots, of, lots of potential and lots of yeah. charm and lots to think about us. But we're on the right track still. Most definitely, yeah. But we still need an answer to that overriding question. What's going to happen to the pig farm behind the property? The herd is about to be sold off, but the future of the farm units is still uncertain. With an eye for development, Brown is keen to turn this to his advantage. What are your thoughts on the farmyard? Yeah, I, I think before we even entertained the idea of buying this, and it is a, you know, a, a, an idea in our mind, is one has got to find out what's going to happen to that. And I think it's almost uh, a necessity that one purchases that with the house to prevent future development of houses there. And we can find out some more information on that. Yep. But meanwhile, we've got another property to see. Yep. Happens to be my favourite, so go on, Let's team. Get on with it. Looking forward to this. Yeah. But there's just one snag. It's 20 miles and a 40 minute drive west of Ipswich. Well, I have to admit to being pretty excited about this one. Not only do you have the house, there's also eight, maybe nine outbuildings. Terrific. A pond. Yeah. And seven acres of grounds. Whoa. Well, that's the land, isn't it, that we asked for? That's yep. the land that you asked for. So we'll come back to have a look at that. First of all, impression, please. Well, from what you've said, and from what I can see of the outbuildings, Fantastic. I would say initially, house looks very, very small. small. Not as small as it looks, though. With four bedrooms and a sizeable kitchen and reception room, it's on the market at £350,000. This is the sitting room, which is actually a modern extension. It was built eight years ago. But you wouldn't know it, would you? Not at all. No. Very, done very well, hasn't it? Yeah, really well. Very roomy as well. Big enough for you? Plenty. The other clever detail in this house is this hatch, which was cut in the ceiling. You can shove any piece of furniture, virtually however big, up through this hole, rather than up the cottage stairs. We could probably even get cherry up there. <laughs> 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 Definitely not sideways. <laughs> but there's more to this plot than the main dwelling. I think we'd better take a bit of an explore around all these outbuildings. Well, there's plenty to explore by the looks of it. Find out what you might just do with them. But... <laughs> I know, I'll do, I know what I'll do with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sunday lunch. <laughs> now, this is the real piece. That really is the uh, pièce de résistance, yes. isn't it? I wonder if you get planning on that. Yeah, I think this is a real treat to yeah. find it like this. I mean, this is exactly what I was wanting when I said outbuildings. It would make perfect house, perfect office, even house for us. Your house, if it's sat here, benefits from a spectacular view, which you haven't actually appreciated yet, and with seven acres going down to a river. Well, that's it. That's the land. Oh, there's a river at the bottom there as well, is there? Oh. Wow. That really is the wilds, isn't it? That's fantastic. That, I take it, is the uh, 
bottom boundary. That's right, down, down by, by the, the trees. River. Yeah. Could be your manor. Well, your we'd love estate. it to be. There's no lack of outbuildings, but is it actually too much to take on? What do you think? Uh, well, I love it. I think it's got just stacks of potential. Uh, just a few things to think about. What it's, do you think? It's got everything that we have set out in our particulars. There's a couple of issues that we need to discuss, such as location, cost of property. Well, a lot to think about overnight. It's though. a lot to think about. Meanwhile, our research into the property at Kettlebaston has revealed that the farm buildings aren't, for the moment, for sale. Armed with this knowledge, we reconvene the following day to hear Cherry and Brown's thoughts. Yes. We both fell in love, I think, with the first property and also the last property, the farm. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a couple of reservations and a couple of considerations that we've got. Mm -hmm. uh, the first property is the, obviously the price and the amount of work that needs doing on it. Yeah. Uh, the last property, which is is just absolutely fabulous, hits the hits the bill perfectly. It's uh, it's a long way outside Ipswich, uh, and also obviously the main consideration is the planning commission on the barn. Well, we've got a lot of research to do, but I think we need to go back and have a really good look around both properties. Yeah. So it's back to Great Bryset with its magnificent hall. This time we need to go beyond first impressions and look more critically at its physical state. One room resembles a building site, but is it as bad as it looks? Now we thought we'd bring you in this way. The timber of the original floor would simply have been laid on top of the dirt. Now you'd need to come in and spend about £300 to level it off and prepare the ground for the new floor. After that it's the cost of the timber. Right, which is probably the more expensive part of it. Yes. yes. So, replacing the floor won't be too pricey, but it's important to remember that historic buildings carry a responsibility. The Grade 2 listing includes strict guidelines for what you can and can't do to a building, and you may, at times, have to employ specialist craftsmen. We called out medieval expert John Berry for advice on a deteriorating wall at one side of the property. The fact that the wall's laying, laying over at an angle means that any rain that you're going to get on this aspect of the house is is literally hitting the walls and running down and possibly going inside. You could probably render it and solve all your problems um, and add a lot of insulation at the same time. Could you give us a, an estimation of cost? Um, it needn't cost, cost a huge amount. I, I would think you could get it rendered for less than a thousand. Possibilities at Great Bryset then. Next up is the farm and all its outbuildings. There's so much to consider here, but first off, let's find out if the house itself is in good nick. This is one of two bedrooms which you could use as the master bedroom. Now, it's funny, this house, because it's very cluttered, and the gentleman who lives here has a lot of old memorabilia, and you think that the house is a bit tired, but it's not. If you look around, you can see there's a great big new radiator there, Lots of electric plugs and points. All oh, the plasterboard seems yeah. to be very smooth. Windows, Windows, new, you know, it's all there. Brown's major concern is whether he'd get planning permission for the barn. A phone call to the local planning department really ought to shed some light on the situation. You would consider... They have a policy that they want to encourage employment in rural areas. Right. So they would much rather see it turned into a commercial space than a residential. He did go on to say that if you marketed it as commercial premises for a period of time, then they would look much more favourably on an application for residential use. Most of this house doesn't need anything doing to it. It's in really good nick. But this is the one room where you really need to do some work because everything that you see is going with the current vendor. It's in no way a fitted kitchen. The only thing that's going to stay is that quite makeshift sink arrangement and this which is a solid fuel burner which heats the water for the radiators and the bath upstairs. Could you live with it as it is? Not in such a raw state, no. Um, we would definitely have to do some work in here. But it's got so much character and so much potential and I especially like the feature of the stable doors. Yeah, I think so. Cherry is reassured about the house while Brown has got plans for the outbuildings. Yeah, I think if you've got permission on the barn be nice to see another access coming in from over there, round here, and having a separate entrance. There's certainly a lot of potential way. here. But there's an awful lot to think about. <laughs> the 
They've had a night to sleep on it and a lot of discussion. Cherry is enjoying a well-earned lion, but she and Brown have come to a couple of decisions. Well, hi, you two. Yeah, uh, just putting your feet up, having a little bit of rest at the moment. That's all right. We've had our little discussions. And, oh, good. Uh, we'll put an offer in on the first property of 275. That's the Great Brysett House. It's on the market at 325, and you want to put an offer at 275,000. That's right. And uh, on the same theme, we thought it would be foolish to try and put a, a high offer in for the other property. So... You're going to put an offer on the other one as well? Wow. That's two offers in one weekend. A location's first. Brown wants to buy the farm for £35,000 less than the asking price, and that's subject to planning permission. So both offers are low, but worth a punt. That's wonderful. Well, brilliant. I'll wait to hear from you. Many thanks. Bye-bye. Whilst Brown continued with negotiations, Cherry gave birth to little Amelia Lucy Brown, and she was born four weeks ago, £7.12 ounces, and an absolute treasure. And what about the houses? Great Bryce, it was the one which Cherry absolutely adored. The offer was too low, I think we, we all knew it was going to be too low, and he didn't accept it. And then the farm, which was my uh, little uh, hobby horse, was um, perfect, but just too far away. So we're moving out of here um, very, very shortly and we're going to be moving into rented accommodation. For the short term, it will do us very nicely. So the search continues.